Hey everyone, it's Jim from Vows and More, an online vintage tube store. And today in Tube Lab number 94, we're going to take another look at sonic tweaking. But first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. Now, before we get into today's topic, uh, we've got a special offer. We've got a couple of really large two purchases to make in US dollars. So all of our PayPal money goes into two purchases and we've basically run out. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a cash back offer for anybody who can buy anything using PayPal. So here's the deal. Buy whatever you want in the store, including the kit amps and make the best deal you can use your discount codes and after you make the purchase i'm going to send back five percent to paypal purchasers for the entire purchase and that's going to run for the week until um august the 4th okay and we'll talk more about this at the end of the show haha <laughs> okay so this week Charles and I reviewed the sweep of the production version of the URI monoblocks and we ended up with a big decision to make. Do we go with the better spec new version of the URI or the original version? This existential tube amplifier question was a biggie for us. Both versions sound great. However, in the prototype version we have more second harmonics, more noise, and higher signal distortion at the highest volume levels. In the production version, we have a much cleaner signal, lower second harmonics, and no signal distortion all the way to max power at 2.25 watts RMS. Okay, let's take a really quick look at the sweeps so you can see what I'm talking about. So, this is the original URI prototype had a great flat frequency response and the bass response was absolutely amazing and so was the treble. Our 1 dB down point which is pretty much where the beginning of when you can actually hear any difference in volume is way down here at hmm. uh, it's minus 24 Hertz. Okay great thanks Charles and way up here we never get to it at 20k. Now the, these are the, your bass frequencies, your very low bass frequencies, but really recorded music bass starts in somewhere around 40 hertz. And same for the treble, really most recorded music doesn't go much above 10k, or even 10k. 10k is 10,000 cycles, or 10 kilohertz, right? So, but we never, at 20 kilohertz, we never even get to the 1 dB down point. So that... That was When I saw that sweep, I almost fell off my chair when we first tested the URI. So this is the proposed production version. So it's at a different scale, but the frequency response is dead flat again. Our cutoff point, our 1 dB down point, is a little higher. It's around 29 hertz, and the treble is very much the same. We're flat all the way out to almost 10K, and we never actually get to the 1 dB down point. So those are great. The big difference is in the second and third harmonic and the noise floor. So this is the original URI. Here's your signal. We bring it up to 0 dB as a reference point. Second harmonics basically minus 40 dB down, maybe a little more. And it's pretty much dead flat. Second harmonics brings warmth to your sound. That's why we're so interested in it. And 40 dB down is a long way down, but it still influences the sonic signature a wee bit, enough that you would notice. Here's your third harmonic, and it's way down here, uh, 60, 68, somewhere around there. And here's the noise floor. In fact, the third harmonic is just above the peak of the noise floor, which is a good place for it to be. So, let's look at the proposed production version to see the differences. Now we didn't print out all of the um, harmonics and the noise but they're way the heck down here. In fact the noise floor is at I think 10% uh, of the of the prototype. It's really quite low. Now if you've listened to me talking about 
sweeps and specs, you know that yes, I pay attention to them and yes, we test our equipment, but they're not the be all that ends all. Really, it's the listening test that matters the most, right? Always trust your ears, always. So, here's our reference signal at zero dB and here's our second harmonic and it dropped how far did it drop Charles about I, I think it dropped about 16 dB compared to the uh, prototype and the third harmonic dropped just about as much right it did yes okay so that's really the biggest difference now that led me to the to the question what what version should we go with and what, where in the system should you be tweaking the sound? And that's what we're going to talk about today. So, ideally, the recording is perfect. And all you need to do is amplify it. And glorious sound will be guaranteed to all. <laughs> and that, as we know, almost never is the case. So that's why we're talking about tweaking. Uh, and we'll probably come back to this topic over and over again. So... Your main options are your source device, where your music comes out of. It can be a CD player, a SECD player, a digital music player. You could be streaming off your computer, off a high quality sound card, however it comes. Next you've got a preamp, next you've got a power amp, and next you've got your speakers. And connecting them all up, we've got a whole bunch of cables. Now, I'm going to suggest that the source device and the cables should be as neutral as possible. So they're off the table for tweaking. Now, speakers are a great option, but once you've invested in them, you're pretty much locked in. You're not gonna roll in different pairs of speakers every month. Not if you've bought a high quality pair and spent the big bucks. And you should be spending about three quarters of your audio budget on your speakers. So once you're in, you're locked in. So you're, they're really, you're not going to be rolling them in and out. So, what does that leave? That leaves the preamp and the power amp. The power amps tend to be more expensive and heavy as heck to move around. So, really that leaves the preamp. So, I'm going to use a couple of our kit amps as examples. Now, you can use any preamp you want to do this, but I know our, preamp, our kit preamps well, so let's bring a couple of them up. So we've got the Universal 6 or 12 SN7. It's a warm, rich, detailed, filled with second harmonics preamp. And best of all, there are a lot of 6 SN7s and 12 SN7 tubes to roll. So you can roll in this preamp into a system and bring that warmth and that rich sound. And you can roll tubes until the cows come home. <laughs> um, and when you get tired of that warm rich sound, in, in my system anyways, I can slide in the E80CC. I've got other prototype preamps I could slide in. This is a, a production kit preamp. And we just sold one actually a couple hours ago. And this is a very detailed, fast. Did I mention it's detailed? It's got great clarity. It's got a fast sound. Why in the heck would it be so different from the 6SN7 preamp? Well, it's the tube and the circuit combined. It's a direct coupled circuit. There's some great videos I've made of the design and of the kits. And when I get tired of that warm, rich sound, I put in the E80CC and I have a completely different sounding system. You can do the same thing with your system if you've got a couple of different, very different sounding preamps, or you've got a preamp that uses a very common tube like the 6SN7, you can roll in a different set of tubes and you'll have what sounds like a very different system. Okay, hopefully that helps everybody with tweaking. And it's a subject I'm going to come back to because it, it, it really makes a huge difference in your system. And you don't need to be buying complete new systems. You All you really need to do is roll in some tubes or change out your preamp and Bob's your uncle. Okay, so what's been going over on over at Melatone Kits? Well, lots, and Charles here is here to tell us about some of them. Okay, 
So let's take a look at what we've got here. We've been hard at work finishing up the CNC plates. And here we have an example of the URI amplifier plate. And we've already cleaned up the work. We've provided a nice brushed finish on here. And just look at that for a second. Look at the way the light is catching it. Isn't it beautiful? And it doesn't have its hand buffed waxed finish yet. No, no, so there's still a little bit left to do on it, but it, it already looks absolutely amazing. Uh, we're really happy with the machining, and uh, this means that we have kits going into the store. They're actually in the store right now, ready to purchase. And For all, all of the three, we've got two kit preamps, and we've got the URI so far, right? Exactly. And so let's take a look at the working side of things here. And you can see it's almost as nice. Of course, it's a little bit of a fingerprint magnet. But the working side of it is where you're going to be mounting all of your components and doing your soldering work and all that. And apologies about the dog barking in the background. That's just Jordy. Maybe we'll have him on camera later. Um, so this is the working side. And it's going to be collecting some scratches and some dings and everything. But it still looks quite nice. So... We've been hard at work getting these ready, and it means that we have amps ready for you. So let's get that out of the way now. Well, that was a huge job, wasn't it? I mean, when you started on that, I figured it would be a big job, but it was a lot of work getting that CNC up to speed, wasn't it? It was a lot of work. It was a lot of learning. Uh, we, we learned, well, I learned a lot with it. And I'm going to be passing on that knowledge here, but it means we're going to be able to prototype and manufacture kits a lot faster than before. That's true, because up until now I've been I've been manually machining uh, plates, and we we were producing really high quality plates, but it was taking a long, long time. Okay, well, what came in this week? Well, we literally have thousands of high quality tubes in transit heading this way, but we only have a few nice things to show you. So. This, in my opinion, is the most underrated 6SN7 ever made. It's a GE. This is the GTB version. These are new old stock. It's been, it's been really unusual. It's an unusual tube in the sense that I, I almost never find them brand new. Um, and I've been lucky. I found a bunch of them. There is the early GT version, stay away from that. It was a very failure prone tube. The GTA and the GTB are very similar tubes. Um, and my preference is the GTB. It has the full base. Um, it's got a fairly large flat gray plate. It's, it's got a very distinctive side getter. Let me see if you can see it right through the middle here. There it is. And the, they'll ha there'll be halos. Some of them are horseshoes. It depends on the plant and the production year. They basically all work the same. And if you want to know if you've got a real GE, most of the production run um, over the years had these little dots. When you see little dots, that's mach a machine code that GE used. And no, I can't read it. But I believe it tells you the date of manufacture. And even if it's rebranded RCA or whatever, if you see the dots and it looks like a GE, it is a GE. So what's so good about these GE tubes? Well, they're amazing cathode followers. I use them exclusively in the Freya Plus uh, sets that I sell, and I sell a lot of tubes to, to Shit and Freya customers. And everybody loves the GE and the cathode followers spot. But... It's been an overlooked tube because it is quite a good voltage gain tube or a preamp tube. It's a very clean, clear sounding tube, a very neutral tube. So a little less colorful than let's say a Sylvania or a Meltz tube, but it, that has its place. So if you were using these, let's say in a, a, in a tube buffer uh, for um, a recording, for example, or you just like a very natural, neutral presentation of your music, this would be an absolutely perfect tube to be using. The GTB and GTA versions are absolutely rock solid, reliable, they tend to be low noise, so they're just a great all around tube. Okay, and Charles is a huge fan of the Loctal tube, so he's got a little, uh, a little 
group of tubes he wants to talk about. What do you got, Charles? Okay, so as many of you know, and as Dad just mentioned here, I love the Loctals. And we've got three really nice examples here, and uh, we think these ones are really interesting for a very good reason. So, let's take a quick look at these beautiful vintage, uh, let's get that in the camera frame. These are probably about 80 year old boxes. Look at that Philco box. And as I'm sure some of you know, but many probably don't, Philco was actually uh, really big on these tubes, on the Loctal tubes. They, they stood behind Sylvania on them and they used them in a lot of their equipment. So you'll see a lot of Philco branded Loctals. And we've got an RCA branded one. Of course, uh, Sylvania made almost all of the Loctal tubes, so you'll see tons of rebranding, but here, of course, is a beautiful vintage Sylvania black and green box. So let's take a look at the tubes inside here. So... These... Oh, let's go the other way on this one. There we go. So these two, of course, are the same tube, and these are the 7F7. Now the 7F7 is a 6SL7 GT equivalent. The only difference being, of course, the Loctal base on it. Now we like to use the 6SL7 Sylvania in our Wilsonton, in our Wilsonton R8 amplifier sets. And they just make a great preamp tube in them. They're warm, they're rich, they have that classic Sylvania sound, but we've been having a hard time finding them recently, and they tend to test bad and, and are fairly noisy. So, uh, these tubes are much more available. They are testing great. I mean, here are two examples that I pulled, and they are perfect matches. I didn't select these out or anything. These were just two that we pulled out of the pile. And actually, this is a great point right here. So if you see here, we have 83, 83 marked on here. And why 83? Well, our tester goes up to 120, and these tubes can vary quite a bit. So new old stock can range from 80 to 120 on our meter. So 83, 83 is actually testing slightly over new old stock for us. So these are absolutely perfect for 80-year-old tubes. So. These are actually uh, equivalent to the older Sylvania 6SL7 GTs. Uh, let's see if you can see the plates. You can see the plates are pointing in towards each other. And this RCA rebrand is an example of the later angled plate version. You can see the gettering is a bit less, but it has that typical Sylvania halo getter. And those beautiful black round plates and it's also testing very nicely and this is something we're consistently seeing with these tubes. So in our Wilsonton R8 sets we are going to start including these in the preamp stages along with these adapters which are going to replace the standard uh, socket savers that we recommend to be used to lift the tube up and make it easier to access. So we're going to be including those with the tubes as a replacement. So let's get these out of here. Well, thanks for that, Charles. Yeah, I think the um, I think the going with the seven F sevens is going to be a, a good solution for the what is getting to be a really scarce tube, the Sylvania six SL seven. And of course, they're essentially the same tube, but there there's a couple of things that the Loctals do. Um, that the octal version doesn't right when they designed the loctal they actually designed it as a um as a lower noised uh version of the octal tube right uh they did yeah actually and you're stealing a little bit of content from a later video here but one thing let's just bring this back in here that they did is that this base is actually a shield and it was meant to be grounded right so that was part of the low noise but the smaller uh, glass envelope is also part of that, I think. The smaller envelope, and generally they were built to uh, a mil-spec standard in most cases. Right. Okay, I'm going to let you 
um, you can have uh, a whole show to talk about. I know you love the Lochtal tube, so you can you can do a whole show somewhere down the line. So, uh, as we talked about earlier, um, we're running a special PayPal 5% uh, discount. Uh, so, go ahead and make the best deal you can buying any tube or part or kit. Take a discount. Now, the kits aren't you can't use the discounts on the kits. The margins just are too tight. But get whatever you want, get your best deal in the store, and I will send you back 5% of the total purchase price if you pay with PayPal dollars. And I've got flat rate shipping around the world of $20. And if your order's $150 or more after discount, the shipping's on me, folks. Stay safe, everyone. Have fun. This is Jim and Charles signing off. Cheers, everyone.